Hi guys, this is Harsh Bhardwaj from Simply Learn and welcome to this tutorial on C++ Basics. So let's jump in and see what's in it for us. So we will be covering today the basics of C++ that is we will learn how to write your first program in C++, then types and variables in C++, after that topics like arrays, strings, if else statements, for loop, while loop and functions. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So let's start with the introduction to C++ programming. C++ is a popular programming language introduced by John Strostrup in the year 1979. The aim was to make a dynamic language that is efficient and has some additional features to C. Initially, it was called C with classes as it was an extension to C language, but later renamed as C++. It is general purpose case sensitive language and it is called pre-compiled language because it converts the source code directly to the machine understandable code. It is an intermediate level language because it contains both features of high level and low level language. C++ supports the features of object oriented language like encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, etc. It also supports procedural programming and functional programming as well. Now, as we have understood about C++ programming, let's move on to our first program in C++. So the first program for beginners is Hello World program. In this program, Hello World is printed. It is very basic program and in the first part of the program, we are including a header file, hash include iostream. Header files are generally used to import features into the program. Functions like cin which is used to take the input from the user and cout which is used to display the output are defined in this iostream header file. Here using namespace standard means we are using all the things which are within the standard library. The second part of the program is main function. This is a special function from where the execution of program starts. Inside the main function we are printing hello world using the cout which is used to print the output. Return 0 on the next line will indicate the program that nothing will return and program executed successfully. So let's try this hello world program on our code editor that is VS Code. So let's first of all name the file hello.cpp so first of all we'll include the header files hash include iostream and then namespace standard we'll write using namespace std now we'll write the main function that is int main now inside this function we'll print using cout and will write hello world after that we'll write return 0 all right now let's try to run this as you can see hello world is getting printed over here so this is how it's done so now let's move to our next topic that is types and variables. Coming to types and variables. In C++ there are different types of data type that acts as a keyword which is responsible to define a variable. First is boolean data type. This keyword is used when we have two values either true or false and these values are used when there are conditions. For example, if the condition is satisfied, then it's true, otherwise it will return false. Next is character data type. This character data type is used when we are dealing with alphabets and symbols, and it is used to hold a single character within the variable. Integer data type. This data type is used for integer values. They can be both positive and negative. Next is float data type. Float is used when we want to store values that are in decimal form. 
now variables variables are used with these data types it is generally used to store values and this is the syntax to define a variable first we will mention the data type and then the variable name of our choice for example int is the data type and data is the variable name moving to arrays arrays are one of the most important and widely used concepts in c++ it can be defined as a collection of similar kind of elements the elements of array are stored in contiguous memory locations that is one after the other arrays make it possible to store multiple values of the same data type into a single variable the syntax to declare an array is first we will mention the data type then the array name and after that number of elements inside the brackets our next topic is strings we can define strings as a collection or group of characters it is basically used to represent text in the program and we can perform many operations on strings in order to manipulate it the syntax of string contains a collection of characters surrounded by double quotes for example here string is the type str is the name of the string and coffee is the value that is assigned to the string in c++ there are two ways to create a string first is c style strings in c style strings collection of characters are stored in the form of arrays they are basically arrays of type character the second way is using string objects we can create string object to hold a string they are implemented in the standard library which we must include in the program using hash include next is if else statements if else are two conditional statements that are generally used when we want to run the code based on some conditions we run a block of code which is inside if statement only if the condition is true for example if the number variable here is equal to 10 then only the block of code will execute and will print the message you got it otherwise it will run the else block and display the message written inside that block which is not this one now coming to loops first is for loop for loop is the repetition control structure that allows us to repeat a block of code for a fixed number of times instead of repeating the same code again and again the syntax of for loop has three parts first is initialization it is used to initialize the loop next is condition which is used to determine when to end the loop and last is updation which is used to update the loop variables for example inside the loop i equal to 0 means we have initialized the loop from 0 and i less than 10 means the loop will keep on repeating until i becomes less than 10 that is it will repeat for 10 times in total from 0 to 9 and i++ denotes that we are incrementing the loop after each iteration by 1 another type of loop is while loop while loop are used in c++ when we don't know the exact number of times the loop should repeat it repeats the statements till the given condition is true the syntax of while loop is while keyword and condition in the brackets and the loop will iterate till that condition is true and once the condition becomes false then the control passes outside the loop for example in this while loop the condition is number less than 10 that means the loop will keep on iterating till the number is less than 10 that is till when it becomes equal to 9 and inside the loop after printing the variable number we are incrementing the variable because we want to increment the variable number after each iteration now moving on to functions functions in c++ are group of statements that are designed to perform a specific task it allows us to write a code inside the function and then we can use that code every time when we need it by simply invoking the function we can also pass arguments to the function the syntax of function is type function name and then the parameters inside the function brackets we can write the code and we can invoke the function by calling it from the main function 
So as we have understood these concepts, so let's move on to our code editor that is VS Code to do some examples on these concepts. So here we will do an example in which we will find the number of even elements and odd elements using array, for loop and if else statements. So let's first of all make a new file. Let's name this file as basic.cpp. Okay, so first of all, we'll include the header files. Now we'll write using namespace standard. Now we will include int main and int main and here we will declare an array arr and we'll write and we'll mention the elements to 7 let's say 12 and nine okay now first of all we'll initialize the variables let's say int even zero and we'll initialize odd variable with zero as well now we'll write int length because we want to find size of the array and for that we'll write size of array name then divide size of array of zero so now i'll explain this part here we have an array which has five integers and since size of an integer is four bytes Therefore, size of array is 5 into 4 that is 20 bytes. Now, int length we have written int length equals size of array divided by size of array of 0 that is 20 divided by 4 that is equal to 5. So, 5 is the size. Here, size of array of 0 is the size of element at index 0. We can take any index here like array of 1, array of 2 or array of 3. So now we know the length of the array. So here we will include the for loop and we'll start with int i equals 0. We have initialized i with 0. Now i less than length, this one. Here I have written i less than length, that is i less than 5. Okay. Now i++ plus plus, we are incrementing it. Now we have to use if condition because we want to find the even elements and the odd elements. And for that we have to include if condition. So we'll write if array of i mod 2 that is if an element on dividing by 2 gives 0 as a remainder gives 0 as a remainder then it will it is even element so we'll increment the even variable this which we have initialized 0 will increment over here okay so now in else block we'll write odd plus plus it means that if this condition is not true then the odd variable will increment all right now we will print the variables so we'll write even numbers and we are printing these outside the for loop so that they don't repeat with the for loop so that is why we have printed these outside the for loop okay now 
we'll write the variable even and l for the new line similarly we'll write odd number odd numbers the variable odd and after that we'll write return 0 okay so this is the code so now let's try to run this one there is some error okay yeah the spelling is wrong yeah Okay, let's try again yeah here it is as we can see even numbers 2 or numbers 3 we can check it like even numbers 2 12 there are two even numbers and 179 there are three odd numbers so in this question we have used array for loop and if else so now let's try some other example okay let's name this as basic2 dot cbb all right first of all we'll include the header file hash include iStream now using namespace standard okay now we will do an example in which we will print the elements from 1 to 20 using while loop and with the help of function so first of all we'll start with int main and inside int main we'll simply call or invoke the function by writing the name of the function this is the name of the function print function okay so here we are calling this function and after that return 0 we'll write okay now we have to make this function let's create void void is the data type print function is the name and inside this function we'll first of all initialize i the variable i with 1 now we'll use while loop and we'll write the condition i less than equal to 20 this means that the loop will keep on repeating until i becomes less than equal to 20 so basically it will move from 1 to 20 times in total the loop will repeat for 20 times so now all we have to do is we'll just print the i variable and in order to give some space between each element while printing so that is why we have used double quotes with a space between them now we'll increment i plus plus so that i will increment after each iteration all right now here we have called this function and it is getting printed inside the function itself so let's try to run this one Here we can see this is the output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 up to 20. As I have told you, as you have put the condition less than equal to 20, so that is why 20 is also getting printed because we have used equal to over here. So we have called the function print function, and inside that function, we have initialized the variable i with 1 
and we have put the condition i less than equal to 20 so that is where the loop is getting repeated for 20 times and i is getting printed inside the loop and after that we have used increment operator so that the value of i gets updated every sing after every single iteration so this is the output so now let's move on to the next example so let's make a new file and name it as basic3.cpv so here we will do an example of string and we'll do some push back and pop back operation on it so first of all we'll include the header file hash include io stream then using namespace standard namespace standard okay now we'll start with int main all right first of all we'll write string data type then the name of the string s here s is the name of the string all right now first of all we'll display a message to enter a string so okay enter a string now get line this is the syntax when you want to take the input of a string so get line c in is used to take the input and s is the name of the string so this is how we take the input and uh, now we will print another message saying that you have entered now here we will print the string s next line and l okay now we'll do some operations like s dot push back this will add an element at the end of the string so let's say we want to add y so we'll write y inside the bracket s dot push back and inside the bracket with single quotes we'll write y now we'll display a message saying after after using pushback function we'll print the string that is after using the function pushback the string would look like this and now we'll use another function s dot pop back it will delete the element from the end so we'll write c out and we'll display the message after using pop back function let's write pop back only and we'll print the string okay now after that we'll write return 0 and I think it's done only the spelling is wrong over here okay yeah now let's try to run this As you can see the message enter a string so let's say I have entered Barcelona so you have entered Barcelona after using pushback Barcelona Y 
because we have used y over here we want to add y at the end of the string so after using pushback barcelona y and popback function after that we have used and we know that it will delete the element from the end so here we can see there is no y popback function have deleted the element so this is our output and these were some basics examples of C++ basics it includes the examples of array for loop if else and functions strings we have covered and there are some more examples on each of these topics so I suggest you to please practice them all and that is how you will get a good understanding on all of these topics so you can try some more examples on it and alright guys with that we have come to the end of this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up I hope it really helped you all thanks for watching stay safe and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here